Hey friends, in this video I want to talk about a concept that I invented called service project throughput. And this really stems from two things. One is my own experience doing fun service projects, and the other is the theory of constraints, which Eliyahu Goldratt invented and I learned about through Tiago Forte, who has some lovely posts about it. In my experience, when I started doing fun service projects and focusing on doing fun service projects, that started to be the only thing that I wanted to spend my time and energy on. I just became obsessed with it, and it was almost like compulsive or addictive, except I think entirely wholesome, because doing these projects was so rewarding for me. It was so fun. It was the most fun thing I could be doing. It was more fun than like a lot of the things that our culture says are fun. And then it was also so clearly beneficial for the world, helping other people, making a more beautiful world that I was contributing to. I loved it. And I just wanted to get as much of these service projects out there as possible. I wanted to both experience that feeling for myself of completing service projects and enjoying the process and feeling, you know, the like celebrating having completed these projects, feeling accomplished. And then also seeing the benefit that these projects had for the world and and even what new projects completing a project opened up that usually they made it possible to do even more projects that they were the stepping stones and building blocks for even bigger projects that were more fun for me and more beneficial for the world and i just wanted to do as many service projects as i possibly could as fast as i possibly could and i started to think about this in terms of throughput which comes from the theory of constraints is adopted in all kinds of contexts. And this is the rate at which a system can complete or finish something that that system is designed to create. So in the context of manufacturing, for example, say you're manufacturing cars, it's the rate at which you can not only finish a car, but sell it and have it be safe to drive and everything like that. So it's like finished cars that are safe to drive that you actually sell. That's the throughput that the system is designed to operate. And from that perspective, things like the theory of constraints make a lot of sense. There are some maybe counterintuitive findings about how systems work that you can sort of optimize for the throughput of the system and end up, you know, having dramatically more throughput than you would think is possible if you apply the theory of constraints. And that's outside of the scope of this video. But as I said, Eliyahu Goldratt invented it and Tiago has some really lovely posts about it. And so I started to apply the theory of constraints and that model of thinking to service projects. And exactly how to apply the theory of constraints to that is also outside of the scope of this video, but I just want to talk about what service project throughput actually means, because it's a little bit different than the car example, because um, with a car, you want to finish the car that's safe to drive and you actually sell it. And there's sort of similar but different qualities with a fun service project where you don't want to just maximize the rate at which you finish projects. You don't want to just do as many projects as possible in sort of a naive way. You want to also be optimizing for fun and benefit. So on the one hand, the amount of fun that you have doing projects and the benefit or impact that those projects are having. And that's sort of a balancing act that you're optimizing for not only the rate at which you finish the projects, but the amount of fun that you're having and the impact that those projects are having. And importantly, while you can kind of track the rate of projects finished in a quantitative way, I think that fun and benefit are actually qualitative things that you can have qualitative measures of really, especially sort of a subjective sense of it, but perhaps indirect qualitative reports on and you can also have sort of correlations that are quantitative for how much fun you had and for the benefit it had. Depends on the project, of course, but you can probably think of ways to quantify fun and service, but I think those are correlations and sort of indicate the amount of fun or benefit that's had, but they're not directly the thing itself. And the thing itself is actually a qualitative measure. For example, the, the, the amount of fun that you feel in your body or the amount of benefit that people have in the world from a project. And those are hard to quantify, if not impossible, even if you can have important 
quantitative indicators of them. I do think that's possible. I'm not saying that you can't have meaningful quantitative indicators of either fun or benefit, but ultimately it's a qualitative metric and something that you want to optimize for qualitatively. And that's different than a purely quantitative metric of projects finished over time, which is a rate, which you can actually pretty straightforwardly quantify in my experience. And there's a skill to learning how to, for lack of a better term, qualitatively measure something like fun or how to qualitatively measure impact. And there's a skill to relating that over time as well as the rate at which you finish it. And then even further, there's a skill of optimizing the service project throughput as a whole and using the theory of constraints perhaps to optimize for that. And even though there's skill to that in the actual, in your actual life, it's, uh, it's not easy or simple, but you develop an intuition for it. And the more projects you do, the more you want to do this and the easier it becomes to sort of optimize for this where you're like, yeah, was this actually fun for not or not? And it's important to ask yourself that after you finish a project and to update what your sense of what's fun for and what kinds of projects you want to do based on that. And it's important to really notice and pay attention to the causal impacts of a given project and what that makes possible and what effects it has to the extent that you can. Uh, you know, some ways that I do that, for example, is like listening to the feedback that people give me of like, hey, I really loved this video you made or this blog post you wrote or, you know, I attended this event and it really meant something to me. People's verbal feedback is one good indicator of that. But also you can kind of track other more nebulous, more subtle effects of, oh, this project helped me to learn this thing, or this project ended up causing this other project to happen, or this project did this thing, led to this series of events that I couldn't have anticipated when I started it, but was clearly beneficial. That often happens, That especially with the projects that you're not really sure why you're doing them, but you just feel called to do anyway, that seem fun for you. Those ones often have impacts and benefits that you could not have imagined or anticipated ahead of time. But because you trusted your sense of what's fun and what you felt called to, they did end up having those benefits. So this is why I created this concept of service project throughput. It very clearly relates to the theory of constraints, to a traditional idea of throughput, but it involves the qualities of fun and service, which I believe are qualities that you can't quantify. You can have indicators of them that are quantitative, but are ultimately sort of qualitative metrics. And I think it's worth being attuned to this, this measure of service project throughput and what is the rate at which I'm completing fun service projects and how much fun am I having and what is the benefit that I'm having and how can I have an even bigger impact and optimizing for that. Um, this has been such an enjoyable process for me to try to increase the rate at which I do fun service projects to increase the amount of fun that I'm having and to increase the impact that I'm having as much as possible. And the more I do that, the more rewarding it is for me and the more benefit there is for the world.